Hello, welcome to Flow with Mildred. Today's topic will be, I am loved, and so are you. I have a question for you. Have you ever doubted God's love for you? I know I have, <laughs> sad to say. But I'm at the stage of my life where, come what may, I believe God loves me. And I know there have been times when Life hit so hard. I can remember one time it was just so bad that I was lying in bed. I couldn't sleep. I was, I was like, I cannot even explain or describe how I felt. But finally, I just said, God, I know you love me. And I remember a peace just came over me and I, I went to sleep. Well, when I was praying about what do I speak about this week, <clears throat> The thought came, love. And in case you've never heard me say this in any other video, FLOW, for FLOW with Mildred, it's an acronym for faith, love, obedience, and worship. And it was what God used earlier this year to remind me that he's always with me. To remind me that his loving kindness is always flowing to me. I, um, I do a lot of reflection of my year in December because that's my birth month. And then when January rolls around, I tend to make plans for the year. But this year, when January came around, I was still in reflection mode. Like, those things actually happened. <laughs> I, and depending on when you're seeing this video, I'm talking about 2021. It was a beast year for me. And I was like, those things really happened. And I was shaking. I'm like, do I make any plans? Do I even... I, I mean, I could not plan for 2021. I, I, I could not foresee the crazy stuff that happened that year. I mean, it was at the point where when it was not just like, I'm dealing with human issues. There was like this bird thing going on. I'm not even going to go into details. I'm just going to say I went, I had to visit a lawyer about a matter. And when I got to his office, he sat, I sat down. He's like, Mildred, did you tell someone you were coming here? I was like, um, when, when I left, I told my children. He's like, why did you mention anything? So I was like confused. Like, why is he? And then he started speaking to me about this bird that suddenly showed up. <laughs> and that's when I realized that he was into a lot of spiritual stuff. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and we had quite a conversation. And I explained, you know, yeah, this bird has been following me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't tell anybody that it's just been a weird, weird thing going on. And so it was it was just a lot that year. And I, I I was still shaken when January rolled around. I didn't want to make plans. I didn't want to really think too far ahead. And um God sat me down and the first question was, What do you believe? And that's where the faith came in. What do you believe? And it's like he had me look back and see the situations again and indeed his faith the, my faith in God my belief in God's love my obedience to his instructions and just worshiping and a lot of thanksgiving after the matter sometimes before the matter was settled really pulled me through some mess that year and God started reminding me this has been a pattern in your life why are you so afraid? Why do you think last year was any different? And then he started showing me some stuff that were really extreme. So when I finally started this channel, I, I felt that I should speak about some stuff I've been through. Because there are other persons who needed to hear. Okay, yeah, we all go through. We all go through. There's a scripture that talks about there are others in the world who go through what the trials we're going through. But God is there for all of us. And we, we, we have to encourage each other, other. And this week, I um, I was up in the wee hours of the morning. It's just it's the night before last. And I remembered something that happened in the day. And I, I was going to shake it off. But it's as if God was telling me something. So I started praying about it. And then I saw it from a different perspective. So I started thanking God for it, you know. And um. A song popped in my head. You were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. 
You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. And I, I remember thinking, is this even appropriate? For <laughs> but I felt there must be something about it. Because here I am just praying. Just thanking God. And I, um, I, I found a song on YouTube and I started playing it. And the tears just started flowing because the words were so real. You know, I think for all those times you stood by me, for all those truths that you made me see. And there's a line that said, I lost my faith. You brought it back to me. I, I just started weeping. I said, God, this is my love song for you. Every line is so real in this moment. Because what I was praying about was literally the incident happened. I didn't think much about it. But as I was praying, I was reminded that some time ago I was concerned about something. I brought it to God and I let it go. And the, the, the incident actually addressed the concern. And that was God showing me he loved me. That was God showing me that, listen, I haven't forgotten you. And you, 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 I, 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 I heard you <laughs> and I love you. And there I sent answer to someone else who, I'm not even sure why the person had sent me the message. The person certainly don't know what I'm, I was concerned about. But by virtue of who it was, it did address the concern for me. And I, um, so that night, I just, I just allowed that song to just be my love song to God. I'm everything I am because you loved me. And um, I wanted to read a passage about God's love. Romans 8, from verse 35 to 39. And it said, who shall, it reads, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now I have, I have discussed this passage with my children and I always tell them, but there is actually one thing and that's our unbelief. And I will explain to them that, um, you know, there's a passage where Jesus, it was said that Jesus couldn't do many, much works there because of their unbelief. And that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And um, I, I believe that the devil fights us many times, trying to get us not to believe God loves us. Because love has a way of elevating us. Love has a way of giving us confidence that, yeah, I am somebody and I can do this. Love has a way, I don't know about you, but love, when I remember that God loves me, I get bold. I couldn't sit before this camera if I wasn't sure, God, you told me to do this, you love me, you're not going to drop me. <laughs> you're not going to drop me. If nobody sees it, then if it's just for one person, okay, you're not going to drop me. You're going to let them feel what you want them to feel and you're going to use me. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He loves us. But if we choose not to believe, we're not going to feel it. We're not going to experience the effect of it. It's, it's, it'll be there. I've heard this, this, this description. You know, if, if I give you a gift and you, it's the exact thing you've been praying to God about, but it's well wrapped and you took the gift and you put it on the shelf and you refuse to open it, can you ever make use and enjoy the thing that is actually in the gift wrap. No, you can't. I've known there are times when I've had to fight for what I believe in terms of God's love. And I've seen, <laughs> I am just so grateful that my heart is still open to people. In terms of, Jesus said, where iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And over the last few years of my life, it's just been such, 
I've seen so much hatred. I, I, I can't call it nothing else. When people come at me, people I have invested in, people I have loved, people I have sacrificed for, that came at me with such vehemence. It's nothing but iniquity. And I understood what Jesus meant. Not that the love of those who are already doing the iniquity shall wax cold, but the love of those who were loving can wax cold because it's just been too much. And I've been there. I've been there when I told God, I want to be bitter. I asked him to stop letting those words. I, I've always loved scriptures from childhood. So sometimes, as I said, I fight my battles in my mind. I've said that in another video. In terms of when I see some things coming, I'm ready. I'm starting, I'm, I'm quoting scriptures, you know. And I remember one time something like that was happening. And I told God, listen, I want to be bitter. What was happening was so wrong. <laughs> God gave me three months of foolishness and then he corrected me <laughs> because he loved me. <laughs> I remember I was, I, I, I was battling in my mind and the scriptures that were coming and all this negativity was, and scripture was coming back. And I told God, I want to be bitter. And the scriptures just silent, went silent. And for three months, I, I had an attitude. <laughs> and one day I was cleaning my full length mirror and I stood up to look at the mirror. I saw my face. And I remember asking, what happened to my face? And clearly I heard, that's what bitterness does. <laughs> I repented right away. <laughs> I repented. But I also had a lesson to learn from that experience that many times we can repent of things that, foolish things we, we allow ourselves to do and sin. But sometimes it's, there are habits that attach to them that we had to deal with. My attitude now, I had to go back and deal with it and be careful of how I speak to people and, and stuff like that. It's like I had to like start just checking myself in a lot of ways. But it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. God chastened those he loved. He allowed me to understand what he was saying that day when the verse were coming. Be, be careful that any root of bitterness comes in and many be defied. Yeah, th those verses were like flowing. And I told him I wanted <laughs> Okay, so you know I'm not perfect. <laughs> I, I wanted to just speak to someone today who may be feeling, who may be doubting, who may be questioning. God, do you really love me? Do you really love me? I wanted to just give like five things. You can do to wrap yourself in God's love when you feel like you're worldly shaken, when, when, when the doubts are knocking in your mind. It's just like you, you, you cannot even fight them off. I know how that feels. I've been there. And the first thing I would say, though, is be honest with God in prayer. Tell him. Tell him. I love, I, I take a lot of examples from David in the Psalms, and I love how David would just be raw and uncut. And he'd be crying out, oh, you, you forgot me? <laughs> how long will I go on mourning? <laughs> He was like raw and uncut with God, you know? I mean, even that psalm that was, was, was foreshadowing um, Jesus, it's like, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? I think that's Psalms 22. He was just raw and uncut, you know? Be honest with God in prayer. Tell him how you're feeling at the moment. Tell him how you're feeling. Just pour it out to him, you know? That's the first thing I would do when, I, when, I'm, when I'm concerned. God, this thing is hard. This thing is, is really knocking at me, my faith. It, it's chipping away at me. I, I really need to, to know that I need your help now. I, I, need you, I need you. Just be honest. The second thing is check if there's something you need to deal with that is causing you not to feel God's love. Um, we got to be real. It's, it's, the, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. That's written. God chasing those he loves. Because he doesn't want us to stay in sin. He knows the wages of sin. It may be sweet for a season. There, there, there's pleasure. I think the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. But that season will come for, to an end. And sometimes what you think is sweet in your mouth, it will turn to gravel inside of you. So he, sometimes there's something that we need to deal with that we don't want to face. And he's starting to cause us, open that door to the enemy telling us God doesn't love you. God doesn't love you. Deal with it. Deal with it. You know, is it unforgiveness? Deal with it. Tell God. I, I, as I said in my, I think my last video, listen, 
Sometimes we all struggle to forgive. Oh, some of us. Tell God the truth and deal with it. Is it negative words people are speaking over your life? Or you have been speaking out of your mouth. By, the words, by our words, we shall be justified. By our words, we shall be contempt. Deal with it. Tell, tell it to God. Is it fear? Fear brings torment. But it's written, perfect love casts out all fear. So fear can have you not feeling God's love for you. Blocking your faith. Deal with it. Call it out for what it is. Remind yourself that God never gave us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And pray and say, God, no, well, I would say fear, you got to go. You got to go. Power, love, sound mind, I receive you. I accept you. <laughs> Deal with it. Thirdly, I would say procre proclaim God loves you out loud. Say it out loud. You can use for me. This is something I do. I like using scriptures and create affirmations from scriptures. And um, you can Google scriptures about God's love and turn them into affirmations. Um, we love him because he first loved us. I would say, God loves me. I know God loves me and I love him. It's just simple affirmation. This is the one that drops in my head. I mean, even if you could only remember the one that is well known, John 3, 16, for God to love the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But shall have everlasting life. You can affirm. God loves this world. And I'm part of it. And he loves me. Right now he loves me. He gave Jesus for me. Just affirm your love out loud. Just affirm your love. God I know you love me. Because I'm telling you the truth. I have found that just opening my mouth. And speaking the word of faith can oftentimes shift a whole load of circumstances. And I just remember just today in, in devotion, I mentioned to, to the children that there's a scripture both in the Old Testament and you. I should have looked it up so I can quote it properly. <laughs> but I, I can't remember who was speaking in the Old Testament. There was, but they were saying the word of faith is nigh thee, even in that mouth. And, and it's in the New Testament. It's in the mouth and in the heart, the word which we speak. As usual, I will search for these scriptures after review the video and I will put the reference below. The word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth. It's the word we speak. There's power in the word we speak. And sometimes you just have to, by faith, whether you feel it or not, say, God, I know you love me. Or just say to yourself, God loves me. Affirm it. Say it out loud. Find scriptures. Google some scriptures. Read them out loud if you just don't even know what to say. Just read them out loud to yourself. Fourth thing, I would say listen to songs about God's love. And also sing songs that remind you of God's love. Now, I, 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 I said it that way because I know there have been times in my life that all I can do is just listen. <laughs> as much as I love to sing, there have been times. And even the other night, I just listened to the song. And told God that's love. I was just overwhelmed with emotion. I was crying. I told God that's my love song to you. And I was think I was listening carefully to each line, and I was reflecting and seeing times when indeed it's as if there were times when God like showed me that there was nothing that was out of my reach. Indeed, you know. So sometimes I could only listen, and depending on how you feel, you just find a song and just listen. And if you can sing along, it. It's always good to open your mouth and affirm. I remember one day I, I was um, doing some work and I was feeling really down. And I put on that song, God is so good, by passion. I love that. I, that's one of my favorite to put on replay when I'm not feeling, when I'm feeling a bit down. It's like, amazing love that welcomes me. The kindness of mercy. I just love that song. And I'd had it on replay. And several things I can tell you happened. Number one, the atmosphere changed. It just lightened. Number two, it, it, what I was working on was kind of hard. And it was no longer a burden. Number three, after a while I started singing along. God, you're so good. <laughs> oh God. You're so good. Yes, God. 
And then I got a phone call. <laughs> and I got a bona fide blessing that day. I'm not going to say every time. To me, the biggest blessing is just reminding yourself God's love you. God loves you. But things happen. Things happen sometimes when, you, when I worship. When you worship. When we worship. And I got a phone call. And it was definitely a blessing. I was like, okay. God, you're so good good of course i put more passion <laughs> i put more passion into it so listen to songs about god's love and if you can't just worship him just sing about his love and the fifth thing i had was listen to messages that remind you of how much god loves you no i'm i <laughs> i'm one who always say god is not easy with me so i don't shy away from from harsh messages i don't shy away from messages that convicts me I don't shy away from, from preachers who even like come across as condemning. I don't because I, I, as I said, I believe the goodness of God brings us to repentance. I believe that God chastened those he loves. So I don't shy away from, from the hard things. But I believe when you're very sensitive, when you're vulnerable, it's okay to find a message that just reminds you that God loves you. It's okay to get the sweet messages and get the sweet words being spoken over you. It's quite okay. It builds you up. It strengthens you. God's, God's love elevates. And that was what I wrote down as a quick message just to remind someone, remind you, God loves you. I know it's hard right now. I've been there. <laughs> I know you're shaking right now. I've been there. I know you're starting to doubt. I've been there. But God wants you to know he loves you. He loves you very much. And the answer is actually on its way. As a matter of fact, right now, I believe your doubt might be causing you not to see the answer he has already sent. And so I'm just going to pray for you. Abba Father, watch in heaven. I praise you. Lord, I love you. <laughs> and I thank you for your love for us. That we should be called the sons of God through Christ Jesus. Father, I'm asking you today to touch the one here and listening to this video who's been doubting your love, who's been struggling, who's been wondering, God, when are you going to come through for me? I pray that you remove any blindness from their eyes and that they may see the way of escape that you have already created. I pray that they, Lord, that you will embrace them in your love right now. Right now. Let them just feel it. Enter into the room where they are. Back off every power of the devil that has been speaking. All those words making them doubt you. Back it off in the name of Jesus. And let your love just wash right over them. Engulf them. Speak words into their heart and into their minds that you love them. And Lord, I'm praying for answers. I'm praying for the miracle they need that it will come through. If it comes a different way, help them to be able to recognize it for what it is. And that it is you. It is you. You're there. If it, there's some sin in the camp, sin in their lives, open their eyes. Give them the boldness to stamp it out, to deal with it, to face it. Because you love them. And it's your goodness that leads us to repentance. I thank you for hearing my prayer. I know you've answered I praise and I magnify your holy name. To you be the glory. <laughs> we love you, Lord. We honor you. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, God loves you. And so do I. <laughs> yes, he got me to get over myself and sit before camera and create a video to remind you that he loves you. He loves you deeply and he does want the best for you. He will provide. He will advance you. He sent Jesus Christ that through him we can have blessings because he loves you. Please believe him and let him show you what that love really means. Thank you for listening. <laughs>